Oh, dramatic. So dramatic. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry that we need to disappoint you, the ladies, before. I mean, now you have two old guys trying to explain to you how to enter the uh, U.S. market. Uh, I'm Hussein Husseini, as you can see. I, um, I run a consultancy called Hope Advisory, and I work with Mike, uh, who's uh, running CEO Partners. And, um, yeah, um, Mike. Us. I, yes, I am. Um, I'm a German company. Well, let's say European company, or let's say I'm a German company, successful in Germany, which all of you guys know is very hard in Germany because it's a tough market. Where do I go next? Go? Do I go to the UK? Do I go to France? What's What's the best thing to do? It's been debated for a long time. Uh, the traditionally, long, you know, a couple of years ago or more than that. Uh, Rocket Internet had everybody covering the territory across Europe and uh, waiting to be bought by Americans. But more and more are coming straight across. European tech has gotten better and better. And, um, you know, if you're careful, uh, there's there's a big pot of gold over there. So I don't have to tell anybody about the size of the market, uh, et cetera. So, um, you know, I'd certainly say the U.S. I, the U.S.? Well, why, why shouldn't I go? I mean, if you look at the European market... Yes, of course, the U.S. has the biggest opportunity, over 300 billion in digital ad spend, just to educate you, sorry, oh, and, uh, and, uh, and about 65 billion in Europe, which you know, is hypothetically, because with the you know, macroeconomics we have right now, I don't believe that. But um, you know, typically Germany has about 20 in spend, right? Uh, France, 16, and then there's the U.K. with over 35. Why don't I go to the U.K.? It's the toughest market in the world. Um, every American uh, comes over and is giving it away, whatever it is, uh, on the theory that they'll be jumping off into the rest of Europe, which often doesn't happen. Uh, I think it's the toughest media market in the world. I mean, if you're not delivering in two weeks, you're paused, uh, you know, on the on the media side of things. And, and, you know, it's just, it's a very competitive market. Traditionally, French haven't liked going to Germany and Germany, you know, to France. Uh, and it's not a personality thing. It's just, I had, uh, you know, one German client say, you know, just, I'm, I'm killing it here. I'm number one in the market. And I, it's starting over over there. I mean, nobody knows any of my proof cases or whatever. I might as well just, um, you know, look at the big market. And I, I think there once was a time too, when um, the buy side would demand, you know, pan-European coverage. It's sort of for, forced you know, whether it's a technology platform or what have you into, um, you know, into broad European coverage. I don't think that's really the case as much anymore. Don't, don't, I mean, Europeans are, uh, Europeans in general are, you know, when, when you when you look at the scale of the U.S. are overwhelmed, right? So, and so when you, you know, what, what, what do I traditionally know need if I want to go and hire somebody in the U.S.? Like say, I, okay, I'm deciding I'm going to the, U.S. I need a VP of Americas. I need an office. And uh, you know, is that the right decision, or should I? What's the cost of that, and is that the right approach? Um, my, I'm really not here to pitch my business, uh, other than to say that you know we 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 have developed an alternative, which is an interim step. I mean, the big the big problem that we solve is that compensation in New York is two times London, three times Paris, no matter the position, top to bottom, which is a you know is a is a big issue um, uh, to to look at in terms of hiring a staff and hoping for the best. So um, it it a different approach can be to put your foot in the water and and go out. You know whether you do it yourselves or with help or whatever and um you know interview the market get a sense uh you know go out with a you know simplified deck i mean this is this is always an issue for our european clients uh, and it's not that they're doing anything wrong it's just that this market is uh is different uh there's a much greater interest i guess on the buy side and the sell side and you know how how sausage is made if you will you know a product kind of a pitch. Uh, the U S is just interested in, um, use cases and ROI. I think in part because we change jobs more than folks do here. Um, so, I mean, the future in the U S I mean, I, I just, 
I, was, I, I saw the future of advertising, you know, in the title of D3Con. And I just thought about that for a minute. It's like the future in the U.S. is, you know, is 45 minutes. So, you you know, to go out and talk to people about what your chances are or whatever in the U.S., you need a, you know, a straightforward, you know, presentation on what's the problem you're solving? What do you do? How is it different? How does it work? Cases or testimonials from Europe. And how do we start? What does a test look like? And that fits into a 30 minute meeting. You know, you, you, you know, you have city states here, uh, much more social, you know, anybody you'd ever want to meet in France is in Paris. So everybody knows everybody more social, you know, different kind of meeting. This is, you know, even, even with folks I, and we know it's much more transactional, you know? Um, so I, I, I guess, I guess, my answer to your question would be to feel it out first before, you know, writing checks for expensive Americans, particularly if, you know, you don't yet know what your chances of success, you know, are there. Well, you, you need to accept the fact, right, that as a founder and CEO, who usually earns the most that you, you pay probably twice as much for hiring somebody in the U.S. at some point, right, for a period of time. And then traditionally what happens is they look for a senior director who they call VP Americas. And what happens is then that that person might, you know, leave after six months, which leaves the business in jeopardy, right? Which is, which is a huge problem. Because, you know, if, if uh, you know, relevance is important as well, where right? we talked about this, is like if nobody knows who you are, right? And everybody claims they know everybody in the U.S., like the minions, He's like, uh, how well do you know the agency networks? And then you had a thousand people saying, I know everybody. You know, probably saw him on LinkedIn once. And then, uh, and then. I've, I've heard I've heard it said that uh, Americans are full of, I, I, you know what. Um, I said it very know, it politely. Can be, it can be true. It can be <laughs> you true. You can say full of shit here. Germans are not prude. Right. I was like. Well, good. So. But um, anyway, what. Uh, yeah, so you, you need to accept the fact that they're more expensive. You know, there's a there's a huge uh, huge fear of like, okay, uh, in terms of what do I get back if I give you that amount of money? Like we we it's, always ask, and it doesn't work like that in the U.S., right? Yeah, so it's uh, it's 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 definitely you know that's a thing. I mean, hiring these expensive Americans is kind of funny. We're we're in the process of uh, launching a retail media network with Western Union across Europe and the U.S. right now. And it's, it's kind of a funny problem with compensation because, um, you know, whether it's Kroger's or Walgreens or whatever, I mean, the chief operating officer might be, you know, because these are legacy grocery type companies, the CEO or COO might be making a couple hundred thousand dollars and, you know, accomplished sellers in retail media now are way up there. You know, compensation with commissions can be five, six, seven or something. So, you know, but it's, it's, it's look, it's, if you apply what's possible revenue wise in the U S you know, and do a revenue analysis, you can back into numbers like that where here it's much more difficult, but you know, look, the compensation, I mean, it is what it is. It's a bigger market, but um, there should be a process where you, you don't, just, you know, get an office and hire a bunch of people and hope for the best. It's, it's uh, not a smart way to go. <laughs> I, I had one guy who would, uh, you know, who would always uh, advertise the salaries he wanted and, you know, and, and he, uh, he wouldn't want to pay what he, you know, what you expect to pay uh, in the U S and then he wondered why he went, never got applications. Right. So, uh, yeah. which is, uh, yeah. which is quite funny. Messaging is really important. Um, you know, I, I pretty much, I mean, I, I I've done, I brought 70 companies into the U S since 2008. So this is our 15th year of doing this it's kind of crazy. I mean, everything from grape shot to the daily mail to Samasio and sticky ads and, you know, many others. And I, it's, it's just a cultural thing. It's not, you know, people, you know, I get into a conversation about people's messaging and I, they feel like I'm being critical. And I don't mean to be. It's just it's just a different thing. But you just really have to be able to get to the point uh, and so forth over there. So there's, you know, there's that process. 
And then, you know, you get some visible brands to test. Um, you know, on the buy side, we have we do sell side engagements as well. Uh, One plus X is an example. IO, you know, and others. And um, you know, the idea is to get it to scale as quickly as possible, and then you know, be able to justify that expensive hiring. What do you say? Is like we there for a good time, not a long time? Is that marriage? Go. There you go. I mean, it's uh, it's quite interesting. Like when uh, since we partnered the um you know when we started to work together and i said well you know it's it's going to be easy to pitch but and you know in in europe we somehow are still very conservative there's some companies we pitched a year right and then you go to a company they tell you it's like i lived in the states two years i know how it works and then you know there's one company that i which i can't name here burned 500 grand in six months and then came back to us and we pitched 30 seconds in. It's like, yeah, please, can, I, can you help us? It doesn't matter. Where can I sign? Uh, which at some point, right, admitting that you can not go to market is like, you know, a, a, a very painful process, like admitting as a founder and a CEO, I can only take a company to a certain stage. Then I need to find somebody who can scale. Uh, you the interim step saying, okay, look, you want low risk, you bring me in. I help you. So you get traction, number one, is revenue pipelines. Number two, getting the right people interested in your company who see this company coming out of Europe as their next exit, right? Instead of just burning ground and taking a, a I, thousand people know, out for dinner. People, lunches. people um, you know, have a difficult time going into other countries all the time. It isn't just the U.S. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it, it, it can be, a, you know, an issue. So what's the chance then, I mean, first of all, like we talked about the biggest scale in the market, but why I go to the U.S. because of the exit, right? Because I want to. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And I, I do want to talk a little bit about the economy, too, and like how, how to think about, you know, this year versus next year or whatever. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it uh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> sorry. You forgot the question. So, uh, you want to talk about the economy, yeah. and I was like, and then uh, my question was, why do I go to the U.S.? Like, uh, like, do I go there for for the exit? Like, if you if you right, okay. So I was starting to say, like, traditionally, um, you know, liquidity has been a big part of that. You know, the the uh, VC community uh, for ad tech in the U.S. is completely different from here. There's you know, historically been very little. Now companies like SeedTag and Mint and others are raising bigger chunks of money, and we're coming in alongside teams. But um, uh, it's it's just at the end of the day, it's just a bigger you know. There's a bigger upside, you know. Um, you you definitely sell your company for more money if you bring on the scale, right? There's that, right? That's like uh, yeah. Uh, Grape shot is a, we're not going to mention the oh, what's the number public. Yes, uh, 350 million. Yes. And when they came to the States, did they have money? None. And what did you do? We, we closed a few deals and raised 3 million bucks and uh, you know, later introduced them to Oracle. And uh, they tucked in next to Moat there. Uh, and it was an amazing exit. What, what is quite interesting as well is you know, when, when companies start here, you know, with, you know, we were very product led. Uh, by the way, you know, uh, the person said, I live in the U.S. I live, I'm German, but I live in London. So it's uh, just to clear that out. Not that I really think I'm flying back to the U.S. in tears. Um, as that, um, <laughs> um, we have very product-led company, right? We, when we build products a certain way, we think that's the way to go. Well, now you come to a market that is way more transactional, you know, the product story doesn't work over there. So, you know, you've seen this now 70 times where you had to re-strategize the story from... It's just teasing, it's just teasing out the, you know, the, the use case and the ROI. Like, how am I going to make money on this? For the client. And yeah. For you. yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Not Wherever you're pitching, whether Sorry. it's a publisher or an agency or whatever, yeah. it's like, that's great. But, you know, how does it apply? Um, the economy is an interesting topic. Um, you know, I, I, you know you, you'd sort of look at the economy. I mean, our, ours is, I think, better. You know, our, our inflation rate might be seven. It's higher here. 
Um, obviously, you're closer to you know the war, et cetera. We but I was it was interesting. I you know I was ta- I have a current client, German client, and I was expecting him to to say that. I I ran into him at uh, didn't I had a meeting with him at uh, De Mexico, and I was sort of expecting him to say, well, you know maybe a little later or whatever. Um, and he didn't, he said, yep, we're ready to go. Let's start. And I was like, wow, really? Um, you know, and, and he said, yep, we have a, we have a board mandate to start earning American dollars with this exchange rate. And, you know, we, we want to get into the U S we think it's secure, you know, whatever else. And, you know, the engagement's going great, but there's lots of ways to, um, you know, to think about the economy, and again, uh, if you're not doing it in a huge splashy way, hiring a t- staff of 10, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it should be fine. It should be a stepped approach, you know, whether you're doing it yourself, working with somebody like us, you know, you go check it out, talk to people, get some feedback, you know, if you like that, you know, you, you start, it doesn't need to be, um, you know, anything other than gradual and comfortable. You kind of balance the responsibility anyway. If they, if they, if they bring you in, because, you know, if they hire people in the U.S., you know, you need a CRO or a CEO just constantly nagging on what's going on in the market with you, you're in charge, and you do everything that's res- relevant, you know, week by week to, to make it successful, right, to a certain point. As, a, yeah. as I said, it's, 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 it's not for a long time, right, you, an interim step. To- you know, it, it, it usually, I mean, normal engagement's about a year. Uh, Zoom has been amazing. Oh my God. You know, the normal, everybody in the room, I'm sure would agree. The normalization of Zoom communication is, it's just so easy. You can put somebody in Helsinki in a meeting with somebody in Atlanta. You know, we're, we're culturally, a, you know, a diverse business anyway. Um, so that uh, it's really allowed our business to scale you know, quite a bit. How, uh, I, I assume not every product is works in the U S you have things like that as well, or, or too early and they some, wouldn't listen some, or in some cases like data is obviously different, you know, because of the deprecation of the cookie or not deprecation because of GDPR. Um, it's a different marketplace here. And, uh, you know, you're still dealing with cookies in the U.S. Now, obviously, Safari is half of the market, but, you know, there's there's still used there and it makes it a little different. There always are differences. It's always a little different, but, you know, in most cases, very manageable. That's very interesting. Fascinating. (laughs) Um, which what goes in the U.S. right now? What's hot? I mean, you know, we, we as you said, we're in the data space. We are, Europe, and you said this a couple of times, you know, in our talks. Like Europe has this new confidence after GDPR that we know we have good tech, and then you know, American market is aware of that. What are you know? What's hot in the U.S.? I mean, don't say CTV. I can't hear that anymore. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was just about to say it. Honestly, you know, the CPMs are great. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know as much about the Europe. You know, how you do it here in Europe, but set top box data, it's deterministic. Um, you know, for video, is where everybody's going. No question about you know. Yeah, and then there are companies like One Plus X, right? Little company in Switzerland yep. that you brought over. And, yep. Uh, I got acquired at some point. Retail media, massively hot. Uh, you know, what we're doing with uh, with uh, Western Union doesn't exactly map back to the impression, but at Kroger or Tesco, you ought to be able to map a conversion, a sale at the register back to uh, the ad impression. And I, that, that marketplace is absolutely exploding. Very cool. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, if, I see a few people sleeping. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions? And how to get your company maybe to the U.S. at some point? As I told you, everybody's drunk. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. You had a good show.